primitive reflexes spinal level guided by dr neeti kotecha this video is being presented by agravat rajvi ashra hirna and chavda hiral what are primitive reflex patterns these are patterns seen in early stages of development which disappear later on or with advanced age these reflexes are essential for normal progressive motor development there are some children who may skip some movements but these are not abnormal However, not overcoming these primitive reflex patterns at the right time should be definitely considered as abnormal. Initially, lower centers such as spinal cord control these movements, but later on higher centers like midbrain and cortex take control over them and dominate the lower ones, thus integrating them for various voluntary functional tasks. Disappearance of certain primitive reflex does not mean they are abolished but means that they have been taken over by stronger reflexes at higher level in the CNS. These primitive reflexes are classified according to the level at which they are controlled. Accordingly, we have four levels at which these reflexes are regulated: spinal cord, brain stem, midbrain and cortex. There is a fifth category called automatic reflexes under which we have Morrow's reflex, Galland's trunk incurvatum, Landau's reflex and parachute reflex. At the spinal level, we have our first reflex, flexor withdrawal. Position: supine, head in neutral position and legs extended. Stimulus: sole of foot. Response: uncontrolled flexion of stimulated extremity. This is present since birth and disappears by 2 months. As you can see in the video, the stimulus is given on the sole of the right foot and flexor withdrawal can be seen the second one is extensor thrust position supine head neutral one leg extended and the other flexed stimulus sole of flexed leg is given stroking response immediate extension adduction and internal rotation of flexed leg and plantar flexion of foot present at birth and integrated by 4 months here as you can see the left lower extremity is in flexion when stimulated an extensor response is seen third cross extensor position same as extensor thrust stimulus medial aspect of extended leg response immediate extension adduction and internal rotation of flexed leg with plantar flexion of foot present since birth and integrated by 2 months here we can see the cross extensor response in the left leg and flexor withdrawal in the right leg fourth palmer grasp stimulus press some object on palm from ulnar side response grasping of the object on the ulnar side present since birth and integrates at 10 months normal grasp and release cannot develop unless the palmer grip is present Here the therapist presses her finger on the palm of the baby from the ulnar side and the baby grasps it. Fifth, plantar grasp. Stimulus: press object on the plantar side of toes laterally. Response: clawing and clutching. Present since birth and integrates at 10 months. Normal walking cannot develop until plantar grasp is present. Here the therapist is pressing her fingers on the plantar aspect of the toes laterally and the baby is calling the toes. last but not the least the sucking and rooting reflex stimulus finger touching or going into child's mouth response turning of head of child in the direction of stimulus and appears as though the child is sucking the object present at birth and integrates within 3 to 6 months as you can see here the therapist is tapping towards the left side of the baby's face and the baby is turning his head towards the left side and sucking the therapist's finger